Welcome to the House of Kittens, everyone. This is Fouquet, and today we are playing a text-based slasher game called Clean Suit. So it's basically, you just have to survive a home invasion, and there are several different ways to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. You recline in your easy chair. It is late, and your living room is lit only by harsh fluorescent light from the lamp behind you. There is a slight draft in the room that chills you, and the thought of your warm bed begins to form in your mind. Suddenly, you hear a pounding at the front door, feet from you, causing you to jolt. As your heart races, you think, who could that be? So you suppose you had better take a look. So we'll go ahead and check the peephole. With a jolt of panic, you see a tall man in a clean suit standing motionless on the other side of the door. His face is utterly impassive, and his eyes are fixed in front of him. In his left hand, you can just make out the top of a suitcase. You experience an impulse to bar the door and run. Alright, so, if I were to see just a stranger in the middle of the night that looks like Edgar Allan Poe, I would definitely barricade the door, so I think we can go ahead and use the chair for that. You push the chair in front of the door, hopefully this will at least buy you some time. Alright, so now it's time to go hunt for items. So we'll go ahead and start out with the fireplace. Uh, an empty fireplace with a stone back and wood frame. To its left, there is a bottle of lighter fluid, and above the mantle, there is a painting. So I have gone through the tutorial. They say that you can use, like, short turns to get through all of this, so... I'm gonna try out Get Fluid? Because I definitely don't want to type all that. So let's go ahead and check the painting next. Oh, can we check the chimney, actually? Check chimney. Looking good. Okay. Check painting. You're painting of a man with an entire dog protruding from his stomach. You bought this from grubby looking guys at a garage sale. Apparently they were trying to sell everything from their failed game company. Yeah, it looks like their game company consists of concepts that involve zoophilia. <laughs> so, I think we can check behind the painting. Check behind painting. You stand on tiptoes and peek behind it. There's nothing back there but some dust, which you accidentally get up your nose. Okay. That wasn't useful. There is a table line over there, so check the table. A small table and atop it, your phone. On its side, it's a little drawer. Oh, let's go ahead and open up the drawer then. That didn't look like it would have a drawer. So I opened the drawer. Inside is a small address book. Look address book. Or can I look at book? Okay. Small book titled My Friends and their numerical telephone numbers. Oh, that was a delay. A few numbers have been scrawled on the first page. Polly's Pizza, Speed Dial 1, Miss Jones from Next Door, Speed Dial 2, Philip Glynn's Free Screens, Speed Dial 3, 911 Speed Dial 4. Hmm, the third one seems really interesting. Let's give that a try. Call Philip Glynn's free screens. Let's see what this comes out to be. When the line connects, all you hear is a single uplifting scream. Man, you can always count on Phil. Wait, can I hear the scream? Yeah. That, that was some enthusiasm. Really appreciate that free scream. It's a free trial there. Not going to pay $10 for it every month. Uh, let's go ahead and check the map, actually. So we're in the living room. There are... Uh, I don't want to go to the porch. I think we could go upstairs, but I also want to go to the kitchen. There's a basement right next to the kitchen. Backyard shed. Let's go ahead and go to the kitchen first. Go kitchen. This is where you push food into your mouth, sometimes after cooking it, often before, stains and spills dot the floor, walls, and the countertop lining the wall. On the counter sits a toaster, blender, and a knife block. Standard kitchen appliances fill the room, including your fridge and the sink and stovetop oven. Behind you is a door to the basement, and to your right is a door to the backyard. So, I'm not really sure if there's like a capacity that is limited for the inventory, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the toaster. Also grab the blender. Okay, you grab the jar of the blender, though you aren't exactly sure why. 
could be useful later on because you have to be creative when it comes to surviving in this. Uh, get knife. Pull the knife from the block like some sort of King Arthur. Trumpets glare and women swoon at the incredible feat. Just don't stab yourself. Alright, so now I can defend myself. Also, they didn't inform me about the cabinets, so I'm going to go ahead and open the cabinets. And there's a bucket. That's definitely going to be useful, I feel. So, grab a bucket. Alright, let's go ahead and check the sink. Slightly grimy and mostly slimy, there's a cabinet under it. Yeah, I already checked that. Why didn't you inform me of that before? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and turn on faucet. Turn on the spigot and watch the bated breath as thin jet of water comes out. Wow. Did you just say wow? Okay. Um, muse bucket. You suppose you could probably hold some fluid with this if you find some. Yeah, water. <laughs> I don't think water is going to help me anyway, so... We're just going to have to find out something else. Let's go ahead and check the basement now. Definitely don't want to go to the backyard. Seems pretty shady. The low light of the basement reveals the washer, dryer, a tool bench, and a few scattered odds and ends, including an oversized piñata of your head and a can of gas. For a moment, you have an insane desire to grab your clothes out of the dryer and start acting as though nothing is wrong. Come on. I wouldn't be that moronic. We're in a slasher game. So, let's go ahead and grab a gas can. And I see a bottle right there. Is that bleach? Grab bleach. No. What do you mean no? Grab a bottle. What is that? Ammonia? It's ammonia, a cleaning solution for the toughest stains. Goes without saying that it hasn't been touched. You notice a triangular warning label and a blurb explaining that this substance is not to be mixed with bleach as it will create a deadly gas. Hmm. Sounds like I can succeed with this item in some way if I were to find bleach. But, I don't know. Sounds pretty dangerous though. That could go straight into my eyes and lungs and all that. Let's go ahead and check the bench. Tool bench. With the tools you have here and maybe some things around the house, you might be able to fashion yourself some mean of dispatching the killer. Just need to get some ideas on what to make. So what do I have in my inventory right now? Um... Doesn't sound like anything useful so far. I mean, the bucket could be useful for the ammonia, but I would need the bleach. So I guess we'll go on a hunt for bleach then? Um, don't know how to do that. I might go back. Mistype. Go to the kitchen. Go to the living room. And we're going to go ahead and go upstairs. To your left, the stairs to the first floor stretch down, ending in the door you'd like to get as far away from as possible. You see doors to the bathroom and bedroom. A gas mask sits lonely in the corner? That is an erratic item to be carrying around the house. Because he was getting ready for like a nuclear war. Um, that's actually going to be helpful for the deadly gas, actually. So we'll go ahead and grab mass. Um, what's up here again? Closet, bathroom, bedroom. Let's go ahead and check the bathroom. They might have bleach in there. I don't understand why they didn't put it in the laundry room, though. Seems like a more appropriate place to put that at. Side of many showers and long contemplations, after a long glance around and a few panic thoughts, you decide to barricade yourself in here isn't the best idea. That barricading yourself isn't the best idea. You see your sink, toilet, and shower. And I also see a cabinet. As you haven't informed me again, do I have to just look at the sink every time for it to be informed? So, open cabinet. Inside, you see a bottle of bleach. Well, this is all escalating really quickly. Um, I meant to type in... What? Okay, so I can't move back, so I have to actually type it all down. Get bleach. Back. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and combine those now. I mean, I, I'm really curious as to see what that could do. Um, move to the hallway. Move downstairs. 
Move to the kitchen. And back to the basement. And... I, I don't understand why you can't just combine it with... Can you? Let me see. Combine bleach and bucket. Or can I do this? Bucket and ammonia. Combining these items might be easier with a flat workspace and some additional tools. Why do you need additional tools to do this? All you have to do is pour. Also, I need to wear the mask. I forgot about that. Wear mask. You fit the gas mask over your face. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and go to the bench then. Go bench. Maybe try looking at it. What do you mean? Look bench. With the tools you have here, and maybe some things from around the house might be- oh, Wait, didn't I already read this? Uh, combine, bench, and bleach. Alright, so, we want to use the bucket, and the ammonia. You pour the entire bottle of bleach into the bucket, and pause briefly to confirm to yourself you really want to do this. Then holding it at arm's length, you open the bottle of ammonia and empty it into the bleach-filled bucket. So the gas spreads into your face, but your breathing appears unaffected. You guess this gas mask is working. For an erratic item, I'm glad that was there. <laughs> or else I wouldn't have survived that. So... You set up your creation on the stairs. Now you suppose it's a matter of hiding and waiting for the bastard to try and come down here to get you. What would you like to do next? I don't know. Um, wait, I guess? You find a perch behind some boxes. Tense minutes pass before you hear a slight creaking on the floor from upstairs. In the dim light from the kitchen, you see the pursuer appear in the door frame. He moves cautiously, lowering himself gingerly. Down each stair, you think you see him pause and squint, confused for a moment, before deciding to continue. He falters before the bucket at the first of the toxic fumes, reach his lungs, coughing and spluttering. The killer attempts to flee, but slopes falling down further. His skull smacks sickeningly against a stair as he stumbles down the remaining flight. At the bottom of the stairs, his head lolls horribly on its limb freight frame one last time before he collapses into a bloody heap on the basement's concrete floor. You sure are going to have a lot of explaining to do, but you did it. Okay, so we survived. Yeah, okay. I want to see the serial killer's attacks, though. Come in, he's probably not such a bad guy. <laughs> you unlock and open the front door almost instantaneously. The sound of a motor starting greets your ears. You move away from the door in shock just before the door is blasted back. A man in a clean suit stands, foot extended, wielding a revving chainsaw. You start to turn to run but you don't get very far before the chainsaw starts to work its way through your yielding flesh. Man, he, he really knows how to work that chainsaw. I mean, for all of us humans out here, it takes us a couple of tries just to level that out. All right, we haven't gone to the bedroom yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot. Normally, this room made you feel safe without even realizing it. Now, the feeling is tainted and you feel worse and more trapped in here than anywhere else. You see a few furnishings, Including your bed and bedside table, your closet, your trophy case, and a painting. Okay, so let's go ahead and check table. There is a small table beside your bed with a drawer. On its rest, a lamp and a tape recorder. Um, play recorder. It's blank. Maybe you could add something now? Open drawer. Inside, you see a little slip of paper. Um, grab paper. Eh, this piece of paper is just gonna weigh you down. Okay. You do read it though. Say combination 1, 2, 4, 3. Really original, pal. Okay, so we, we have a safe then. Is it... Go back, come on now. Is it in the closet? No, it... I'm gonna check the closet first. I mean, it's a safe, so I'm pretty sure they would hide it behind the painting. Get flashlight, I guess. I mean, that sort of just standing out of the obvious there. Check poster. A poster for the blockbuster hit, Glory in the Bosom, that you enjoyed so. An epic tale in the saga of Braid, Johnny Knife Blaster. You recall one scene that you drew your interest. KB and used his cunning 
knowledge of explosives to make small bomb out of gasoline and orange juice. Ooh. So, we can get... That's interesting. I'm gonna try that death next. So... Never thought something like that would actually happen. A gas can and orange juice? No, I I'm not gonna try that in real life. That would be stupid. Um... Check painting. You stare blankly at the art, pretending to understand it. Well, why'd you buy it in the first place? Is that like a... It's like an octopus in a Coke bottle. I don't know. Um, check behind the painting. Yeah, okay. So remove the painting from the wall and place it on the floor, revealing your safe. Open safe. You diligently enter the four numbers of the combination, click, and yeah, it's open. Inside is your pistol. And there's no extra ammunition, so grab pistol. Take the gun from inside the safe, fill in its heft in your hand to you as you do. Better be careful with this thing. Okay, but is there no extra ammunition? Are you serious? The next moment, you catch something moving out of the corner of your eye. You jerk your head around and leap backwards as the light from your bedside lamp outlines the form of a man in a clean suit. What do you do next? Well, this is pretty dead obvious. You swing the revolver upwards, pointing it at the killer. He tenses, and a look of determined rage is visible on his face. You hesitate for a moment, and the killer starts to move. Now or never, you pull the trigger invol involuntarily, Shut your eyes. Next second, you reopen them to find the killer with a gaping hole in his leg. Lurching quickly out of the room. Okay. With ringing in your ears, you inch forward, searching for any signs of him, and see a trail of blood on the floor. What will you do next? Follow blood. I Actually, do we have more ammunition? Check gun. The revolver, a leathery, a bolo tie wearing arm dealer. Strong armed you into buying a gun show. So you fired the free sample bullet, so now it's just a big expensive paperweight. So basically I'm out of bullets then. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can check anyway. Um check ammo. Not sure what to look at. Check ammunition. Looking good. Is that a yes or a no? Do I have ammo or not? Looking good, are you kidding me? Um, we still have the knife though, so we can still our defend ourselves, so we'll go ahead and go to the living room. I hate the mistypes. There is a stream of blood trailing through the living room into the kitchen, so we will go to the kitchen. You find the man in the clean suit hunched over, knife in hand, waiting to strike. What do you do? Use knife. You draw the knife and grip it tightly in your hand. The killer notices you and praises his hand. He lunges at you and grabs your weapon. Okay, so I'm to assume that's the sound that means that I survived. I haven't fully read this. Yeah, I, I survived, it says at the end. He grins wickedly as he pushes you against the stove. Your punch bounces comically in your periphery. Shouldn't have had that second pizza for one, you think, as he brings your knee up into the killer's groin. He loses his grip and you bring the knife down into the back of his neck. He crumples instantly, his neck clinging to the blade of the knife, but you did it, you survived. Okay, so we successfully survived twice. This is like really easy stuff, it's actually pretty straightforward, especially when they give you information about it, so... That's what I like about this game so far, and I'm not much of like the text-based type of person, so... Really, really liking the idea of this so far. Alright, I spent the past 12 hours doing this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just show all of the endings for the basement to start all off. Then maybe the secret passage, and then the shed. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, we're going to use the bench, and then we're gonna use the toaster, and then the knife. And that apparently creates a bear trap. So you bash the toaster against the counter, separating it into many pieces, using what you learn from a bear trap home survival guide you get to work. So you extract the places of the frame and springing mechanism and firmly attach the knife to it, creating a trap of sorts. And you aren't sure if it would work against a bear, but it might mangle that man's leg. So we'll go ahead and wait. 
The jaws of the makeshift bear trap clamped down on his leg with surprising force, driving the blades deep into his leg. That was one dang good toaster. Its bravery will not be forgotten. And we get the same ending. He's bloody all over the floor. And I think there's one more to this, and that is the orange juice and the gas can thing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next. So OJ, lighter, and gas can. In one of your favorite movies, Glory in the Bosom, protagonist Johnny Knife Blaster made a bomb by mixing fuel and orange juice in a can, and then fashioned a pressure detonator out of his lighter. Even though your panic state and intense reference for the Knife Blaster quadrilogy, you experience a shimmer of just how ridiculous this idea is. Regardless, you push on and assemble the appropriate ingredients. Why is it so hard for me to say a lot of these words? Okay, so you set up your creation on the stairs, now you suppose it's just a matter of hiding and waiting for that bastard to try and come down here to get you. And we wait. And near the bottom of the stairs, the killer's foot connects at last with the trigger mechanism for your firebomb. You know a second of blinding light and thunder's noise before the world resolves itself. In flames, the killer flails uncontrollably in an attempt to remove the volatile mixture you created, which putters sputters and cracks all the more with his struggle and same ending as usual and i think that's all the ending and you can do all of these at once like you can actually put the bear trap you can put the bomb you can uh, do that first ending that i got and it'll just say that he proceeds to get into this thing and then at least back to this ending but yeah now we're gonna go ahead and do the secret passage stuff just because that is one of the more easier ones. So we'll go ahead and move chair. We'll start off with calling Polly's Pizza. The phone rings just once before enough. And loud noise barks, Polly's Pizza. What do you want? Polly, it's me. I need help. You hurriedly exclaim, Polly recognizing your voice immediately say, Oh, it's you. Your usual will be there in 30 minutes. Before hanging up, great. Maybe now you can die with a full stomach at least. Alright, so that's just one ending. We're going to go ahead and go back. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the books. And we're going to go ahead and press number one. The Al Gore story. And it opens up this basement. So we will move down. Move down. As you ascend down into the hidden room, you hear the entrance seal itself before you. What's more sliding? How this room evaded your notice astounds and frightens you. How long has it been here? Along one wall, there hangs a series of clean suits, and two of the three are stained dark red with layers of old blood. There is a metal embellishing table with a few surgical implements on it, and a sink. On the wall, you see a map to your right. There is a computer on the desk. The staircase leads back up to the fireplace, entrances which you came from. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and check the table. We will get the scalpel, actually. Uh, I guess we'll get scissors too. And there's no need for a spoon, so I guess I'm gonna leave that. Um, basically, I, I think like the computer's just gonna tell a story. Turn on computer. So there is no password, which is unfortunate. Misses an opportunity to show off your sick hacking skills. You look at the glowing screen and see only one file, journal.txt. I guess we'll read that. Open journal.txt. Teddy has begun to speak to me. At first it was just a whisper, but it has grown clearer and clearer with each passing day. He wants me to push further. He likes to watch what I do in here. I relish his company. I would do anything for him. I would love to take him with me when I visit the neighbors, but I cannot risk injury to him. If anything were to happen to him, I don't know what I would do. Well, why do you love your teddy bear so much? Get Teddy. Alright. Suddenly, you hear a loud grinding and sliding, which startles you into a state of panic. The false panel of the fireplace has moved. You backed away towards the wall behind you. To your horror, you see the feet of the clean suit killer begin to descend the stairs into the room, followed by his face, menacing and sadistic. So what do you do? Um, use Teddy. What do you want to use with? Scalpel. The killer sees that you are holding his bear, and his eyes flash with fear and rage. He begins to lunge towards you, but as you raise the scalpel to the bear, the killer recognizes you, your intention, and freezes. 
You attempt to regulate your breathing and stuttering heart. The man in the clean suit looks up from the bear and into your eyes while, while straightening up to his full height. Back away, you say. The man says nothing, but after a moment's hesitation, capitulates. You try to gather your thoughts. Why? What is this? How long have you been here? You say. He utterly silent, communicating nothing other than cold, predatory malice. And through his gaze, you decide to press your advantage. You want to get out of here, but you don't know. You don't want the killer to get out of your sight, so you demand that he return through the fireplace entrance while you follow behind. Once you are both in the living room, you hear a soft knocking at the front door. You turn to look, and as you're distracted, the killer makes a break for the front door and yanks it open. On the other side is Polly's delivery guy. Holding the pizza you order, the stranger produces a knife and attempts to grapple with the delivery guy, who clocks the stranger several times before he falls unconscious, taking care to keep your pizza balanced and in one hand the entire time. You thank the pizza guy for his help, and the two of you share the pizza and discuss the surreal events of the night. You and Rando, as he introduces himself, become fast friends, forming the kind of bond that only pizza can bring. Yeah, so, nothing you would expect, you know, compared to a 911 call, which you thought would be helpful, but it actually doesn't help you. Turns out the pizza guy is a lot more helpful than them. So we'll go ahead and do another one. Alright, so this is without the pizza guy. You tell the killer to keep his distance as you shuffle past him and back your way up to the staircase and through the now open fireplace. You never take your eyes off of him and he stares right back. When you reach the living room, you wrench open the front door, drop the teddy bear and make a run for it. As you look back to make sure you aren't being followed, you see the silhouette of Teddy in the open front doorway, illuminated by the light from the living room. At the end of your driveway, you hazard one final look. It seems that the maniac will not pursue any longer. You manage to escape, but he will you ever be safe again? Okay, so I guess I lost my house. Wow, this is a really wussy ending, I just realized that. I haven't actually read this, I just got the ending. So yeah, I thought that was me that was standing at the door, but apparently that's the killer. Alright, so I did the same thing, but with the 911 call. To your relief, you see the flashing red and blue lights of the squad car through the window. When you both arrive in the living room with no more options, the man in the clean suit gives himself up to the police. You are safe now, but you aren't sure how safe you will feel, while that lair you discover remains behind your fireplace. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and do some other endings because I think that's all the endings for that room. There is the shed, um, there are some separate endings that don't involve any of those particular areas, so... I, th I think I'm just gonna start with all of the areas first and then we'll do the separate ones. This is probably the first time you've been here in over a year. By the dim light of your flashlight, you see a folded tarp, a rake, a hose, and a rather forlorn looking bike. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and set up a clone of me with the pinata head. So yeah, new tarp with the rake. And use pinata with the rake. And we will use the recorder to record our voice. He hypnotized that you could distract or lure the killer with sounds of yourself from this thing. You record yourself making some sniffles and moans of terror. Hopefully your axe is convincing enough. You were once a narrating rat for a school play in an elementary school. So what do you do next? A news recorder with the rake. And now you crank up the volume as loud as possible on the tape recorder, set your recording to repeat, and place it on the floor behind the dummy. Now just wait and hide for the killer to take the bait. So go ahead and wait at this point. You crouch behind some bushes and wait, passing the time by passing gas soundlessly from nervousness. Eventually you see the killer sneaking out into your backyard in the light from the kitchen. I don't know, I just don't like using the term flirting. It just seems, it just seems dumb. But yeah, what do you want to do? So we're going to go ahead and lock the door. You quickly slam the door shut and click the lock into place before the man in the clean suit has a chance to react. You hear shifting around inside of the shed. The killer slams himself against the door causing you to jump back in fear. The latch holds however despite his repeated attempts the bastard is trapped in there. You're safe for now. Alright. 
Um, there is another ending for the shed, but I'm not exactly sure how to get it. Like, I've been trying for 12 hours, trying to figure out this and another revolver ending. But it's not clicking to me. Like, I've tried everything in the book, as far as I know. But there probably is some sort of solution, I just don't know what it is. Alright, so I called the Polly's Pizza guy again, but instead of just being in that secret passage, I'm gonna be in the living room. So, move to the hallways, move down, uh, move chair, and open door. He opened the door to greet the pizza man delivery, and mid-sentence, however, he interrupts, Watch out behind you. You tense up and swing around as the pizza guy runs past you, pizza and all behind you. The killer has evidently had been sneaking up for a surprise attack. The delivery guy slams the man in the clean suit to the floor and begins pummeling him. There is a brief struggle before the killer is knocked out cold. Evidently, he did not expect a hostile delivery man to be waited behind the door when you open it. As the two of you recover from the strangeness of the ordeal, the pizza box catches your eye from the floor. All the commotion sure did work up an appetite, so you and the delivery man, whose name you did not find out is Randall, decide to share the pizza in celebration. Okay, so... Not too sure. What other endings have I not done? But yeah, it's really interesting that they have the pizza man being the guy that's your hero throughout most of this gameplay. And not the cops, but I guess that would be a bit too cliche if they use the cops for this. So yeah, it's nice to have a pizza man having an unusual role to defeat the murderer. But yeah, let's see what other endings I have. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the main menu. Alright. See, I have like two mystery signs right there. I don't know what those are, and I can't figure them out. But, let's see. I've done all the secret layer ones. I've done all the bear trap ones, as far as I know. You can do it in a triple sequence. Um, I think I've pretty much done all of them. Yeah, I think I've done all of them in this playthrough right now, so... I'm gonna go ahead and just show the death scenes at this point, because I pretty much give up on getting all these other two endings, so... Yeah, and uh, this is really ridiculous. Time is farted. What's so comedic about that? I don't get the comedic value. What, why is this game so obsessive with the farts? Passing gas. <laughs> Funny. I mean, I don't want to hate on the game for that, but I don't know, it's just too obsessive with this. Oh well, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and show the death scenes now. Oh, my God. 
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this playthrough of Clean Suit. This is my first text-based horror game, so first impressions on it. I'm really intrigued by it so far. Like, I like that they added the imagery part to it because most text-based horror games don't really add that. They only have the font. So it pretty much just bores me for the most part, and that's why I haven't really been doing most of those playthroughs. So if there are more imagery sort of text-based horror games, I'll definitely play more of them. I, mean, I think we've already done something like this before on the channel, but I don't remember the name of the game. But yeah, sort of eluding me right now. And just conjecturing like all of the items for the endings and then not having a save system, I think that's really frustrating starting the game completely over. So I do advise that you would add a save system to this, so it would make it a lot easier to get around and getting those two endings that I still can't figure out. But yeah, I pretty much give up at this point. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this playthrough of Clean Suit, and stay tuned for the next video. Stay awesome, Kid Sabers.